where to start with books? You know, our hospital is built. I've worked to have four libraries there. Unless I'm disabled, I'm not going to the Kindle. I like books. And it's not that I like books of any kind. I mean, I'm not sure I would ever pick up a John Grisham book. I wouldn't know that there was nothing interesting to think about, so I would pick it up. So I, I don't know. And yet I know that for some that's really great and bravo. That's book surprise, that there are books for you. Even if you don't read, there are books to look at. You don't even have to read. I don't even know where to start with books. I, I probably have a personal library of 40,000 books, each one individually chosen to make me a better activist, to broaden my mind and consciousness. And now that I'm madly in love with a reader who is a great thinker, it's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like I have a book for a girlfriend. And that's no insult to either book or girlfriend. You know, Susan and I 20 years ago said, we have to read more women writers. So I went to Borders Bookstore and I got one of every woman considered a real literary writer. It was like 280 with the idea that she would read them. And when she said, this one's really good, then I'd get every book by that writer. And I wouldn't think twice. I know it takes up a lot of space. I'm a nightmare for any single room apartment, but I'm not a single room apartment. I want to make sure there's a library. There are books that are works of art, and there are books that are simply pages of words. I'm not sure I have any ideas that didn't come first from a book or from a discussion of a book. I found it by reading all of Charles Dickens twice that each of the books was totally different from the age of 15 to 22 when I read them as it was from the end of the 50s and into the 60s that I read them. It's like they were not even the same book. That books now say, because there are so many of them, that you cannot even begin to scratch a surface of them. There will always be tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands to look at that you won't get to. That everything you've shown any interest in is in them and often in them by a person that's so passionate about that. I, I love books on bugs, you know. I love bugs. They've had 500 million years of evolution. We've you know, we've had 200,000, 300,000. So, all humans kind of look alike. But if you get an atlas of insects of 500 million years, they look so different, you can't even believe they're still called insects. And they're right there. They're right there because other people got addicted to reading and wanted to write their books about the thing they were interested in. So there are cookbook collectors that have hundreds of books on cooking. It doesn't really matter. I'm reading this graphic novel right now about James Audubon, and he originally came from France. He changed his name to an American spelling and he had trouble originally publishing his first book of beautiful prints because a man named Wilson painted them a particular stiff way. And people thought that was the right way to present them. So he actually had to fight for the way he presented them. And I like knowing about that. 
The four hours of poetry I know by heart came from poetry books. I find myself wanting, when I get interested in something, I don't want just one book on the subject. I'd like 10. Some, you know, as a nerd, okay, there's some writers I'm addicted to novels and poetry and, and drama. And there are some writers I've chosen to get every book I ever see about them. So I know I have over a hundred books on my favorite writer, Dostoevsky, meaning that other people like them too. And, and I've been, I've been uh, getting a lot of things on Jane Austen because she's so loved all over the world. And there's even a Jane Austen zombie book. I mean, that's, that's where books can go. It's a, it's a world, if you read about when the Gutenberg Bible came in, before that, books were very expensive, all hand copied, and, and then the printing press came along, and they did the Bible in the printing press. It was a revolution, huge revolution. I mean, the thing I like about the Kindle is for poor people, Having a Kindle, the whole world of books is yours. And I think that's right. I'm talking though now about a cover and pages between. And if you take care of it, it's an heirloom. I was bequeathed my grandfather's library and boy, are there some whoppers. All of Balzac, all of Maupassant, oh. And I know, I, I, I won't even be able to read all the books in my own library. And I can tell you about a fetish I have. I love floor-to-ceiling bookshelves. And because I'm familiar with the books I have, even if I haven't read them, I love to go and graze, meaning I stand next to the bookshelf, and I just go over the titles. We'll linger on a title and remember that book. Might even pull it down to see what I underlined. I, I do underline in books. And I feel like it's an embrace. It's, I feel like if it's six shelves of a bookshelf, I feel that each shelf has a pair of arms that comes out and holds me and gives that to me. If you, uh, if you need a good book suggestion, I've, I've got a lot. I, I mentioned my favorite writer, Dostoevsky. I try, when I visit a go country and, and lecture, I try to read at least five books of their literature and one book of their history to get some clue as to who these people are because their great writers have tried to say who they are. And you can find Christians that they think there's only one book, the good book, the Bible. And when I see them use their Bible, I understand that for me, a library is for them a Bible. And that's cool. I think that it's, you know, I don't, wouldn't push a single book that I love on anybody unless they asked me. And then I would simply say, I'm always curious which are their the books. And maybe at a future date, we'll go to a shelf and I'll sniff some. Let me just say one nature book, okay? I, I love nature. And most U.S. citizens have never read a nature book. Try Dave Abrams, The Spell of the Sensuous. If you don't have a romance with nature, this book will make you want to put on lipstick and go outside and kiss a tree and a leaf and a bug. Oh. Keep your library card.